Hey guys, it's Jordan from Weller Health Education with Lehigh Valley Hospital. Most of you guys might know me from previous school years, seeing me in your classrooms. Um, times are a little bit different. I'm coming to you through your computer, through YouTube video. So hopefully you still learn something new. I know it's a little bit different. It's something that we're all getting used to, but it's kind of useful for our topic today because our topic today is online safety. So you guys might be spending a lot more time online now that, you know, maybe you're not doing as much as you were doing before. Maybe you're at home for school and you're remote learning. Maybe you're just using social media more. Whatever it is, you guys might be using the internet a lot more than what you're used to. So we're just going to talk about ways to be safe online. Things you should be doing, things you shouldn't be doing. Um, and it's really, really important that we do practice good online safety because the internet can be a dangerous and scary thing at times. So I hope that you enjoy this video and I hope that you learned something new today. So some things we're going to cover today, talking to strangers online and how to do it safely, how to better protect your identity when you are online, not sharing personal information, not giving out your passwords or your addresses or anything like that. And then the consequences of what you post on social media. I think this is one of the most important topics that we can talk about at your age because I feel like a lot of people don't realize that what they post could come back to get them in trouble. So we'll talk a little bit about that today as well. I want you to think about how often you go online. According to Common Sense Media, the average teen will spend up to nine hours a day online or on social media. So that statistic is huge. You guys are spending tons and tons of time on the internet. Maybe not just surfing the web, but that includes all those apps that you use. Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. All of those combined, plus the people who are playing video games online as well, adds up to about, on average, nine hours. That's a big part of your day. That's about half the time you're awake or a little bit more than that. So it's important that we talk about how to be safe since you are spending so much time online. Right now, connecting with people around the world has never been easier. The internet truly has made it so much easier for us to talk to people all over the world. And that can be a good thing at times. We may know people who might have had to move to another country or another state or across the ocean. And I think it's awesome that the internet provides us with access to be able to talk to them. And connecting with people around the world by the internet may not be a bad thing, but it could still be scary because you don't always know who you're talking to. So yes, at times it can be safe to talk to people online, but other times it could be dangerous. So if you are connecting with people around the world that you do not know previously, make sure that you have an adult that kind of knows what you're doing and who you're talking to so that they can keep you safe. And when you are talking to those people that you don't know, just make sure that you're not sharing personal information because who knows, they might not actually live across the, the ocean. They may not live in a different country. It could be somebody that you just don't know who actually lives pretty close to you, who's just trying to get personal information from you. So even if we are connecting with people around the world that we've never previously met, we still need to be safe. We don't want to give them personal information. We don't want to tell them too much about ourselves. So like I said, being able to use the internet to connect with people is honestly amazing. Being able to stay in touch with people after they move or if they go far away or if you have to move. I think that the internet can be really, really awesome. Same thing with apps, games, and other online platforms. It helps you make new friends who share common interests. And nearly 6 in 10 boys say they've befriended a stranger on an online video game or another app. And that's okay as long as you're being safe about it. There are tons of people out there who have similar interests as you. But like I said, if you are going to meet people online that you've never previously known, then you need to make sure you're being safe about it. When I say that we need to be safe about it, 
You don't want to tell them your first and your last name. Any identifying information about like what you look like, where you go to school, where you live, or anything like that. You just want to keep it pretty simple. Talk about the video games you're playing. Talk about those common interests, but never share that personal information with them. Although the internet makes it really easy for us to connect with friends, family, and people all around the world, it also makes it a lot easier for us to connect with the wrong people. It's a very common thing for strangers to create fake profiles to talk to people. So they use their fake profiles to solicit your information, maybe try to steal money from you, or even try to blackmail you into doing things you don't want to do. Which is why we never want to give out any type of personal or identifying information to somebody that you don't know. Maybe you guys have heard of the TV show on MTV, it's called Catfish. I think that's a very good way to kind of explain what we're talking about. Sometimes this person can look super normal. Maybe, you know, you look at their profile and you're like, yeah, well, they're my age and they have similar interests. They look like the average person. They have some followers, this and that. And you're looking through it and you're like, okay, like, I think this person will be safe to talk to. And these people on this TV show start a relationship with these people that they met online that they never previously knew. And so they start this relationship and then they find out that it was actually somebody who was hiding behind the screen, not being who they said they were. So this happens a lot more frequently than you would think. There are tons of people hiding behind a computer screen, pretending to be somebody that they're not. And you can never be sure unless you actually truly know them, which is why we need to be safe with our personal information. So we're going to do a little activity. I want you to look at these two profiles. These were taken from Instagram. And I want you to, to decide which one of these is a fake profile. So on the left, we have Thor God of Kitties. Just look at that very quickly. And then we have Cynthia Mackinnon. So I want you to just look at both profiles and decide for yourself which one you would think is fake. Do you think one is truly a cat profile? And do you think the other is truly that person? Sometimes you can never truly tell what's fake and what's not. So Thor God of Kitties is actually my coworker's cat's account. She runs it for him. If you want to give Thor God of Kitties a follow, that is Maggie. You might have seen her in your schools before. That is her cat. She posts lots of cat content. So if you are a cat person, it's a great account to follow. But even with dog, cat, animal, pet accounts, you never really know who's behind those pictures. So yes, it's fun to look at. It's fun to look at those pets. But don't give them any personal information. Don't try to meet those people. Just use it as something to look at, something that's cute, something that's fun. On the right, Cynthia, this is actually a fake account. And this is up here because, again, you look at this and you're like, that could be Cynthia. You know, this could be her account. It doesn't matter, you know, how many followers she has or her following or anything like that. It could it really could be Cynthia, someone in her 30s running a Lash account. But it could also be like a 40-year-old man hiding behind that account. You can never truly be sure. All right, so which of these is a fake profile? So I have two Instagram accounts up here. I want you to just look at both profiles and decide for yourself if you think these people are truly who they say they are. So the answer to this is that they're both fake. So it could be somebody that's just kind of hiding behind them. Who knows? Um, but the point of this is just to show you that you really don't know what's real and what's not. So it's important to talk to people that you know online. And if you don't, then make sure you're not giving them any type of identifying characteristics. You're not giving them money. You're not doing anything like that. You're not being very open with them because you just never truly know who these people are. So a scenario where not fully knowing the person and knowing it's safe is if somebody connects you with them and they already know them. So let's say you play soccer and your soccer coach connects you with another player that your coach has coached from another town or another team and you both play goalie and you have other common interests that are very similar. So your coach says, hey, follow this person. You guys are very similar. You know, you play the same position. You're just on different teams. I think that you guys can learn a lot from each other. 
Okay, so this is a trusted adult saying, hey, you don't know this person, but if you follow them and you talk to them and get to know them, like this is a safe person to talk to. That's when I think it's okay to talk to people that you don't really personally know yourself, okay? Because a trusted adult is saying, I know them. This is a good person for you to talk to. You'll learn something from them. But if it's just somebody you found on the internet and you don't know anybody else who knows them or anything about them, then that could be a potentially dangerous situation. And again, you don't want to share any identifying characteristics about yourself. You don't want to give them any type of information that they could possibly steal from you or anything like that. What to do if you feel unsafe when talking to somebody online. So don't respond to them at all. If they're making you uncomfortable or they're making you feel unsafe, the first thing you can do is just start to ignore them. Don't respond to them. If they're persistent and they keep messaging you or calling you or trying to get you to answer, let them know, hey, I don't want to talk to you. Please don't contact me again. Set that boundary with them. Hey, you know, this made me uncomfortable. I don't want to talk to you. And if they continue to do so, then you need to block them and report their user information and make sure you're not responding anymore. And let's say, let's go even a step further. Let's say that you block them and they try to contact you a different way. Again, make sure that you're blocking every type of account that they're trying to contact you from. And if they keep contacting you, even after you block them, then you may need to go to a trusted adult or even the authorities to let them know what's going on because that could be considered harassment because they're still contacting and bothering you even after you blocked them, you told them that you felt uncomfortable by them and you didn't want to talk to them. So those people might give you a sort of a red flag feeling. A red flag feeling is when something happens that makes you feel uncomfortable, worried, sad, or anxious. If somebody is giving you that red flag feeling, that would be a good indication to say, okay, you know, I'm really not comfortable with this. I need to stop talking to this person. And then you can start by telling them, I'm not comfortable. Don't contact me again. And then maybe you will have to block them depending on their response. So what if they just want one picture, your Snapchat handle, your phone number, so that you guys can text or call each other? So when anyone starts asking for pictures or personal information, it's that red flag. You always want to say no. Most of the time, if you don't know someone and they're asking you for that information, it's probably going to make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. And if you say yes, even just one time, it kind of opens the door to asking for more pictures and even more personal info. And that's how these start to move into your life. That's how they start gaining more and more knowledge about you. Once someone has your phone number, they can call you anytime, anywhere. And like I said, it's even more likely that they get personal information from you. They might be able to find out where you live. They might be able to find out some other things that you're doing. So it just puts you in a really unsafe position. So like I said before, never share your first and last name with someone that you've never met before. What school you go to, your address, any type of identifying information where this person could potentially, you know, find you on any given day, know that personal information to log in different accounts, steal your identifying information, and you never want to share sexually explicit pictures. So I know that Snapchat makes it pretty easy for people to share pictures, but you never want to share sexually explicit pictures. You don't want people to see that. They, you don't want them to share it with other people. Once that picture is out there, it is truly out there. It is in the internet world and people can do whatever they want with that picture. So please don't ever share sexually explicit pictures because it could come back to get you in a lot of trouble. You don't know who's really going to see that. And most importantly, never meet people online in person. Again, you don't know who these people are. You don't really know what's behind that computer screen. And if you do choose to meet somebody in person, please make sure you have other people with you. Go in a group. Make sure that there's an adult there in case something does happen if you choose to do that. Like I said, the safest thing you can do is to not meet somebody you know, in person that you met online. But if you choose to do that, and you might choose to do that, if you do meet them in person, make sure that you're in a group of people. Make sure lots of people know what you're doing and where you are so that they can get you the help that you need if it were to go wrong. I said we were going to talk about the consequences of what we post on social media. 
And sometimes we will post things first and then think later about it and think, "Mm, maybe we shouldn't have posted that. So this could get you in a lot of trouble with your friends, family, school, or even a future job. Yes, we have the freedom of speech, but that doesn't mean there aren't consequences to our actions when we post certain things. So I want you to think about things that you post. If you don't want your parents to see it, then you probably shouldn't post it. Pictures and posts can follow you for decades, even after you delete it. So you could post something and then be like, ah, that's probably not the best thing to post, and then you delete it. But it was already posted. It is still out there. And one thing that I've seen a lot over the past couple of months, especially with quarantine and everybody being home, I felt like a lot of people were on the internet. A lot of people were speaking their opinions, which again, freedom of speech, it's fine. But sometimes there are consequences to what we say and what we do. I've seen a lot of different students who've posted A lot of different hateful things, maybe about certain types of people or certain groups, um, about what's going on in the world. And some of them lost their college scholarships. Some of them, instead of getting accepted into school, they got their acceptance letters taken away. Some got kicked off their sports teams. Yes, there are consequences to what we post. You need to be mindful of that. And if you're writing it and you're thinking like, oh, this is going to stir the pot, a lot of people are going to be mad maybe just don't post it. Like I said, it's okay to have an opinion and yes, you have freedom of speech, but sometimes it's okay to just have those conversations with your friends and family. Just having those thoughts and keeping them to yourself. Sometimes things are better left not posted on the internet. So just think before you're posting things. Make sure If you are drinking underage, you're not posting about it online. There are people who are going to parties, they're posting those pictures, and then they're losing their college scholarships. Their future employers are seeing that and they're saying, nope, we don't want this. It's just not a good look for our company. So when you're online, just think about what you want your future to look like. Because if you are deciding to get a decent job in the future... Those employers are going to look at those things and they do care about the way that you hold yourself online and the way you present yourself. So make sure you're doing it appropriately and professionally. Thank you guys for watching our video on online safety. I know it was pretty general and a very broad category, but we are going to break it down Um, A little bit further, we'll have more videos on specific online topics. And if there's a specific online topic that you're interested in learning more about, maybe you're interested in learning more about social media use or about sexting or about the drama that comes from being online, whatever it may be, you can always let us know and we can have that video ready for you. So again, thank you guys for watching and I hope that you learned something new today.